Turn with me tonight over to uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 10. And I'm going to read from verse 7 through verse 9. Uh, the text says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9, Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, the text says, that thee cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that you might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus says something here that's very key here in verse 9. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He says, I am the door. Now the question is, what is Jesus the door to? Well, he's the door to salvation. He is the door to abundant life. He is the door to prosperity. He is the door to divine health. He is the door to peace and, and, and joy. He is the door to forgiveness. He is that door. He is that door that opens up opportunities onto those who will embrace him and embrace those doors that he provides uh, for us. Now, over in Luke chapter 18, there's a story here about the rich young ruler who goes to Jesus and in essence, he's asking Jesus to open the door of salvation to him. Tonight I want to touch on doors. I want, I want to touch on trusting God to open the door that you need to have open in your life. Um, God will open a door for you if you so desire um, to trust Him to open that door, whatever that door may be. It may be a door to salvation, it may be a door to prosperity, it could be a door to a, a better promotion. Whatever that door is, God can and He will open that door for you. So, so tonight, I just want to touch on um, tr trusting God to, to open the door that you need open in your life. I believe that God wants to open some doors for us. And uh, in order for that to happen, we need to understand biblically what it means for God to open the door and it's important for us to understand how to uh, embrace a door when God opens a door or to walk away from a door that God did not open. So let's, let's, let's deal with this tonight. In Luke chapter 18, starting with verse 18, and a certain ruler asked him saying, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why calleth thou me good? None is good save one that is God. Thou knoweth the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, all these things have I kept for my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, yet lacketh thou one thing, sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Verse 23. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. This rich young ruler, he goes to Jesus and he, he's asking Jesus, in essence, Jesus, open the door for me to have eternal life. Because the question is, how can I receive e eternal life? And so he's asking Jesus a question. Anytime you and I go to God and ask him to do something for us, what we're really doing is asking him to open a door for us. So this rich young ruler is asking Jesus to open the door to, to eternal life. Now, many of us tonight have asked God to do something for us. Many of us tonight have asked God to open a door for us. We have asked him to open the door to a better promotion or to um, a, a home that we wanted to purchase or to a, in a, to a relationship or to, um, um, to a, 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 a business. 
But the, the key here is anytime we ask God to do something for us, what we're really asking God to do is to open a door for us. Now, watch how Jesus responds to the rich young ruler in verse 22. Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, ye lack of one thing, sell all that thou have and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Now, Jesus, he tells him in essence, sell everything you have, give it to the poor, come and follow me. But the response of the rich young ruler to Jesus is, is, is epic because he, 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 he says in essence, um, I, I can't do it. Now he didn't, he didn't verbalize those words, but what he did was the text that he was very sorrowful, he was very sad, and he turned and walked away. He walked away from the door that he, that he requested Jesus to open for him. He just walked away from it because he did not want to let go of his wealth. And so he walks away from the door. In Revelation chapter three, verse seven, Jesus is speaking and he says, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things says he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. Verse eight, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast little strength and thou kept my word and thou have not denied my name. Here the text says, Jesus is talking to the church of Philadelphia. He says, you know, I, I know that you're not very strong spiritually, in essence, is what he's saying here. He says, but you stayed with me. And he says, because you stayed with me, he says, I have opened a door onto you. Now, in the Bible, a door is a metaphor or a, a figure of speech for a choice or for a decision. That's what a door is in the Bible. It's a metaphor for uh, a, a decision or a, a choice, if you will. Now, every door is a decision. Now, the decisions that you and I make have to uh, correlate with where we say we want to go because they are the path to our, our destiny. Uh, if I say that I want to be a doctor, then my, 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 my actions have to correlate with what I say that I want to be if I want to get to that place of, of, of being a doctor. Now, there has to be a correlation between our future and our decision making. If our decisions don't line up with our destiny, we're going to waste our time, we're going to waste our money, and we're going to waste our energy. So now watch this. Every door is a figure of speech for a decision or a choice. That's what a door is. Now, wrong doors are costly. This rich young ruler, he asked Jesus, he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? In other words, he's asking Jesus for a door. And Jesus says, here's the way to this door. But he walks away, he turns away, or he makes a decision not to walk through that door because he weighed the cost of walking through that door. And in his, in his mind, his money was more important than eternal life. Now, it's what we have to understand about doors. Every door is a decision. Every door is a decision. Revelation 3.18 says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. In other words, what he's saying here in essence is, I have set before you this door, this, this, this decision here. Now, whether or not you walk through this door or not is up to you, but I have set before you this choice, this decision, this open door. Now, my life, your life will be determined, will be determined by the doors we walk past and by the doors we walk through. And all of us in life are walking through doors and we're walking past doors. And this is important. Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He says, give to the poor and 
and then come and walk through this door. He had to make a decision about that, uh, about that door. And that's what a door is. A door is a decision. You tonight, who have been praying for God to open a door to promotion, open a door to, uh, to a better house, or be a, to a better situation, to a relationship. In that process, there is a decision that has to be made for you to walk through that door that God provides for you. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15, in New Living Translation, the text says, now listen, today I'm giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. So every door is a decision. Now, here's some things that I wanna share with you about a door, and that is this. There are times when God will shut doors for our protection. How many times have you prayed and asked God to do something for you and God did not do it for you and only for you to look back and say, I'm so glad God did not answer that prayer. What you're saying in essence is, I'm so glad that God did not open that door. Genesis chapter seven, verse 16, the text says, a male and female of each kind entereth just as God has commanded Noah, then the Lord closed the door behind him. Now, this is a story about God instructing Noah to take two of every kind of the animal, male and female, and take them onto the, to the ark, because he's ready to flood the earth, take them onto the ark. And the text says, once they got inside the ark, God shut the door. Now, the question is, why did God shut the door behind Noah and uh, the animals? Why did he do that? Well, he did it to protect them from the flood. He did it to protect them from the waters that were gonna come down, to protect them from the flood waters. Now, there's times when we pray and ask God for something, ask God for that door to open, the promotion or a relationship or a something, and God does not open that door only for years later for us to look back and say, you know what, I'm so glad I didn't get that job. I'm so glad that I didn't fool with that guy. I'm so glad that that didn't work out the way I wanted it to work out. What was you saying? I'm so glad I didn't walk through that door or I'm so glad God shut that door. I can't tell you how many times God has shut doors on me uh, in my request of asking doors to be open and for me to look back and say, you know what, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that door didn't open because he gave me a better door. And there are times in our life that we will ask God to do something and God won't do it. And he does not open that door for our protection. Some of you tonight are upset or you are concerned or you are, you know, you're just kind of uh, irritated with God, irritated with your walk because you've been believing God to do something in your life and it has not happened. And it could be, I'm not saying that it is, I'm just saying that it could be that God is not opening that door because he has a better door. It could be that God's trying to protect you from a situation. He might be trying to protect you from a person. He might be trying to protect you from stress. He might be trying to protect you from something that you think you want or you think will be a benefit to you, when in reality, God sees the bigger picture. He knows what comes with that, that door that you're asking, and he knows what you can handle and what you can't handle. He knows what's best. And the guy may not be opening that door because he knows this is not gonna be good uh, for you. How many times have you had a child ask you to do something and you could do it for them, but you didn't do it for them because you knew that had you blessed them with this particular request, it would do more harm than good. So in your mind, you think, you know what? No, you're not ready for that yet. You're not mature enough for that yet. It's just not the season for that. And there are times when we ask God for something and God will say, you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna open that right now because it's not the season. And for some of you tonight, it simply is not the season for what you're asking God for. And we have to accept the fact that God operates on seasons. Life operates on seasons. And we have to accept the fact that, you know what? We may be trying to operate outside of our season. And if you're trying to operate outside of your season and you're trying to get God involved in the process with you, God might be saying, I'm not, I'm not gonna help you operate outside of your season. And we gotta understand that. Now, another thing we have to understand about doors is this, and that is doors sometimes will have opposition. 
1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, the text says, and this is the Apostle Paul talking, he says, there's a wide open door for a great work here, although many oppose me. Here, Paul is going to preach, and Paul is saying, you know what, a, a great door of opportunity has come open to me to preach the gospel. But he says, in the midst of me being able to go forth through this door, he says, there, there, there is opposition in the midst of this, this, this opportunity. And so sometimes a door of opportunity and opposition are the same. And we have to be able to discern that because sometimes God will open a door for us and we'll walk through that door and we'll walk right into the lion's den. And sometimes if you don't understand this, you'll think that it's the devil. You think that you miss God. No, you didn't miss God. You just have to understand that sometimes a door of opportunity is the same as opposition. They come hand in hand. The rich young ruler had a door of opportunity for eternal life, but he had to sell everything. But now watch this. Selling everything was also his uh, opposition, if you will. Now, this was internal opposition, but it, it's still the same. It's still the same. The question is this, when it comes to walking through a door that is, is a door of opportunity and opposition, the question is this, and that is, do you have the courage, do I have the courage to walk through the door that's before us? Just because the door has opposition attached to it does not mean that you shouldn't walk through it. The question is, do you have the courage to walk through it? You know, some people, they shy away from that, ask God to, uh, to bless them and promote them. And then God opened the door for them to be promoted. But then they'll see the job description and they'll see all that comes along with it, you know, bad employees and, you know, and, and, and all types of work and the workload is heavy and the pay is kind of not what they want. And they're thinking, mm, I don't know if I'm going to deal with that. I don't, I don't like the attitude of the people. The pay is not as much as I thought it was going to be. Um, the, the, the hours are going to be way more than what I really want to work. But this is the opportunity that you wanted. This is the door that you was looking for. But because there's opposition attached to the door, you walk away from it. Not realizing that that might just be a stepping stone to where God wants to take you next in terms of your career or next in terms of your relationship or whatever uh, God has you involved in. And so you have to in understand and embrace the fact that some doors come with opposition. Just like the Apostle Paul, he said, this great door has opened for me to preach the gospel. God has done it. I pray for God to open this door for me to preach the souls. God's opened the door for me to preach the souls. But those folks who oppose me, the question is now, Paul, are you going to go ahead and walk through that door? Or are you going to back away from it? Because this opposition attached to the open door. Now, let me share with you this about doors. Um, one of the things that's really important when it comes to uh, doors of opportunity and asking God to, to bless us and to open a door for us, uh, one of the things that's really important, and that is that we had to be able to discern which door to walk through and which door not to walk through. See, not all doors, even though they're there, should be walked through. There's times uh, that doors have opened to me, opportunities have opened to me, and I said, no, I'm not going to, I don't think that's the door for me. I don't think that is where I should go. I don't think I should proceed through that door. And there's times my wife asked me, well, are you gonna, you know, you gonna do this? I'm like, mm, I don't think that's, that's for us. I don't think we should do that. It's an opportunity. And it is a, you know, it, 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 it's an opportunity that's working for other people. I just did not discern that it would work for us. I just did not discern that it was a good fit for my wife and I and our family. It was a door, but it just wasn't a door for the Thompson family. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, the text says, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, 
but not everything is constructive. I believe had the rich young ruler stopped and asked himself the question of, is this the door I should walk through? In other words, he asked Jesus, how can I inherit eternal life? And Jesus tells him, okay, you need to sell everything you have and give it to the poor. This is a door you need to walk through. I, I think had the rich young ruler stopped and gave and given some thought to that door and tried to discern whether or not that was his door, I think, it would, I think he probably would have had a, a, a different outcome. I think had he just kind of discerned, okay, money, eternal life. Eternal life, mammon. I think had he just kind of took some time and discerned the door, I think he would have made a better decision. I think some of you tonight, if you would just stop and discern or take some time to discern some doors that are before you or even some doors that you have already proceeded through, if you just stop and weigh what you're dealing with, try to discern what you're dealing with, I think you might come out with a, a better, a better um, outcome. Because see, sometimes we're so excited because the door has opened or we're so discouraged because it's not what we uh, was expected, but we don't take time to, to pause and say, okay, let me just really kind of maul this over. Let me try to discern here whether or not I should walk through this door. Sometimes we have to do that. We have to really discern, should I walk through this door or should I walk past this door? Just because the door has opposition does not mean you shouldn't walk through it. And just because the door looks lovely and it looks glorious and it looks uh, exciting and it looks like it's gonna be a blessing does not mean you walk through it. There have been times when uh, the door has opened and on the other side there was, you know, big figures and, and, and what have you and it looks exciting, looked like it was gonna prosper and it probably would have prospered but I, I, I knew that had I walked through that door there's gonna be some sorrow attached to that prosperity and the Bible says uh, when the Lord blesses he adds no sorrow to it and so I recognize scripturally okay that's going to come with some 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 tangible uh, issues and it, it, when God blesses he blesses with no with no sorrow attached and so you got to be able to discern am I going through this door is this the right door should I bypass this door and then the second thing here I wanted to throw out here about doors is this, and that is when you walk through a door and it's time for you to uh, leave and go to another door. And so you're exiting one door so you can enter another door. That's all we do in life. We, we enter, we leave. We enter a building, we leave a building. We enter a job, we leave a job. We enter a relationship, we leave a relationship. We enter and we leave. We enter and we leave. That's what we do in life. That's what, we, that's what life is. You enter and you leave. You go from one level to the next level. One uh, level of relationship to the next level of relationship. One level of promotion to the next level of promotion. One house to the next house. Life is about progression. We leave from one, from one level to the next level. In other words, you leave from one door to the next door. Here's what's really important about doors, and that is this, that when you leave a door to go into another door, close the door that you're leaving gently. In other words, don't slam doors. Don't kick doors. Don't cuss at doors. Don't yell at doors. Because you never, never know when you may have to re-enter that door. Watch this now. The attitude of your exit would determine if you can ever walk through that door again. And here's what a lot of Christians don't understand. They get upset at a job. They, they storm out of the job. They get upset with uh, uh, someone in a business deal. They storm out of the business deal. Or they get upset with an individual and they storm out of the relationship. When in essence, you should always close the door to a relationship, to a business, or on a job. Always close the door gently because you never, never know 
if you will have to re-enter that door again. And so many of us, if the truth be told, we have closed doors. We have closed doors with uh, unwisely. We have slammed doors. We have uh, kicked doors. We have cussed at doors. We have yelled at doors. And then only to find out, you know what? Maybe I need to go back through that door. But you can't go back through the door now because you didn't close the door gently. And your attitude, my attitude, will always determine whether or not we can re-enter a door that we exit. Man, I learned that the hard way when I was a, a, a babe in Christ. I learned it the hard way. I, I learned it the hard way, but I did learn it. But I learned it the hard way. I, I, I wish I had someone to, to teach me what I'm teaching you tonight. I just operated out of my emotions, operated out of my frustration. And I, man, when I slammed that door, I, I man, I, I mm, I broke the glass, only realized, you know what, as I matured in Christ, you don't slam doors. You always shut doors gently. Even if you were wronged, even if you know that when you exit that door, you was not treated fairly, you still shut that door gently because you never know when you may have to re-enter the door. And here's another thing I want to mention about doors, and that is closed doors with forgiveness. Unforgiveness is a poison, and it's a poison to the person who holds ought against another person. Closed doors with forgiveness. Release people to God. When you are leaving a relationship, when you are leaving a uh, 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 a, a business when you're leaving a job and, and you feel that you have been wronged okay when you shut that door shut that door with forgiveness in other words forgive people when you leave kick the dust off your shoes and keep moving forgive people don't hold people in contempt don't 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 hold people um, to this thing where you want to get payback, you want to get them back, or you don't leave and, and talk about people, don't, don't leave and discredit people, don't leave and try to get other people to leave with you because you, know, you, you feel you was wronged. No, leave doors with forgiveness. Make sure your heart is right. Make sure that you have a pureness of heart before God because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, God's going to be the one that gets the last word in any situation, in any circumstance. So make sure that your heart is right before God. Man, I, I you know, I, it's one of the things that um, I kind of share with couples who are, are going through a divorce or going through a, a, a split. And that is, man, keep your heart right. Don't, don't, don't try to retaliate. Don't. Don't talk down the person that you spent years with or the person who you have children by. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't discredit them. Don't talk bad about them. I mean, take the high road. I mean, even if it wasn't your fault, just, just you know, okay, it was my fault. Just take, be wronged, okay, just in the eyes of other people. Don't, don't tear down um, uh, the person be, that you spent years with or you have, you share children with. Don't, don't, don't do that. Shut that door with forgiveness. And you let God handle everything else. You don't have to uh, 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 defend yourself in the eyes of other people. You don't have to justify yourself in the eyes of other people. You let God do that. You let God handle that. You just do the right thing and, and make sure that your heart is right before, before God. Now, that's a hard thing sometimes because, you know, if you've been wronged and you know you've been wronged and, you know, it's, you know, you want to you get your pound of flesh in. I, I get it. I get it. But the Bible says, vengeance is mine. I should repay, says the Lord. And so, you know, you, you don't need to get your pound of flesh. What you need is to get your heart right and keep your heart right before God and let the God that you serve handle that. And he will. So close doors with forgiveness. Close doors with integrity. Close doors with integrity. Now, very few people do this, especially Christians. Very few Christians do this. Very few people understand uh, exit etiquette. 
especially in the body of Christ. You know, when you get ready to leave uh, the church, um, leave with, with, with etiquette. You know, just go to uh, the leader, go to the, the set man or woman of the house and just share with them, you know, that you're, you're leaving and, and why you're leaving. Be honest with them and let them bless you and let them uh, 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 come into agreement for God to, to bless you on that le next uh, uh, level of, of, uh, of walk with him, that next journey. Don't just leave and just disappear and then tell people why you're upset or tell people you're mad and you never express that to the, the leadership of the house. Don't do that. I mean, all that does is cause you to look bad. It, just, it really it hinders your blessing and what it really does. I mean, if that uh, person in leadership, if, they, if their heart is right before God, they'll release you and they'll bless you. They'll understand. They understand that people come and people go. People are the number one variable when it comes to ministry. People come and people go. People die, people move, people move on to other things, people get divorced. It, all kinds of reasons why people move their membership. It's, it's fine. It's really fine. But make sure that you leave with integrity. Some of us leave jobs and we don't go to our supervisor and, 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 and go to that person and explain to them why you, you're leaving and or we just up and quit. And we don't give them you know, the two week notice that they need to make a transition. We just, you know, I, I'll fix them. I'm just gonna leave all this mess right now. You go, for, you go to lunch, don't come back. <laughs> and then you wonder why, you know, you, 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 you receive or you, you reap all kind of havoc on the next job. Because the scripture is true. God is not marked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Okay, you're not happy on the job. Okay, they didn't treat you right on the job. Okay, you got a better job. Okay, God bless you with another job. Good, but make sure that before you walk into another door, through another door, that you close the door that you're exiting, make sure that you close that door with integrity. Go to that supervisor and say, listen, I'm, I'm turning in my two-week notice. Uh, something else come up. Uh, I do whatever you need me to do to, to, for transition for the next two weeks. I, I'll work hard for you. Just tell me what you need me to do. Um, I make everything as easy as possible for the next person to step into my shoes. Just, you know, whatever you need me to do. But you need to know this is my resignation and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. That's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. If you're leaving the church, you need to go and then let the pastors know, you know, this is what I'm doing. God is moving me to a, a, another church. He's, I'm moving out of town. I'm just going to go set home. Or whatever it is, I mean, it's your business. I mean, it's, it's, it's your decision. They're not going to try to stop you. They're not going to try to come against you. But you owe that to them because it's this exit etiquette. This is what you do. All right? Last thing is this, and that is, when you're leaving a door, when you're closing a door, make sure you close that door by the timing of the Holy Spirit. Make sure that when you exit a door, make sure it is of the timing of God and not your timing. Don't close a door because of a misunderstanding. Don't close a door because you just tired. You can't take it anymore. You just, I, I'm not putting up with this anymore. Don't, don't do that. If you are a Christian, you should be mature enough to be able to govern yourself in a way whereby you can still be governed by the Holy Spirit. Make sure that when you close a door, you close it by the timing of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit direct you in terms of when you should leave. Let the Holy Spirit direct you in terms of the timing of when you should exit through a door. Don't just, I'm tired of this, I'm not, you know, don't get in the flesh. Always allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and to lead you when you're getting ready to exit one door and enter another door. Now, as I close, let me say this. If you open a door for someone else, if you become a door for someone else, God makes it clear that he will become a door for you or he will open a door for you. Let me say that again. If you open a door for someone else, God makes it clear that he will open a door for you. Ephesians chapter six, verse eight. I love this verse. I've lived my life by this verse 
from the time I came into full understanding of this verse. This is a powerful verse. This is a life-changing verse. This is a true word from God, and it is, um, it is a word that will bless your life if you get a hold of it, if you understand the revelation and the concept of it, and if you operate it by it, I'm telling you, it will just revolutionize your life in terms of how you do things. But Ephesians chapter six, verse eight, the text says, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. This text is saying, in essence, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Man, that's a true word. It's a powerful word. Let me read it to you again. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, whatever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. Now, watch this. You're not going to receive it from the man or the person who you blessed or who you did a good thing to. You're going to receive it from the Lord. What is God saying? God is saying, and this is the New Testament. God is saying, whatever you make happen for others, I'm going to make happen for you. This is why you can never go wrong with blessing people. This is why you can never go wrong with being nice to people. This is why you can never go wrong with uh, uh, for releasing people and forgiving people. Because God says, whatever good thing you do to someone else, the text says, any man doeth. Whatever good thing any man doeth, the text says, the same, same what? The same good thing you did to somebody else, the text says, the same shall he receive of the Lord. So you want people to be nice to your children? Be nice to other people's children. You want people to come into the lives of your children and mentor your children? You mentor other children. You, you want uh, people to bless you? Then bless other people. Whatever it is that you want people to do for you, you do for somebody else. And God says, whatever you do, the same you will receive from me from the Lord. Now, let me share with you real quickly, three doors, three doors that God will always make available to you as a believer. Three doors he's always gonna make available to you and to I as, as, as Christians. The first one is this, that is the door of opportunity to reach other people for Jesus Christ. That door is always gonna be there. God is always going to make a way for us to be able to share salvation with other people. Colossians chapter 4 verse 5, the text says, Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. The text makes it clear that we ought to be wise, how we interact with other people, and make the best of every opportunity. In other words, God is going to give you and I the opportunity to share the gospel to other people. He's always going to give us that door. He's always going to give us the door to serve him and to serve his purpose. And so he's always going to give us a door to, to, to share our faith. And he's always going to give us the, the, the door, if you will, to uh, serve uh, in his kingdom, to serve his work. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. God is going to give you and I always the opportunity to work for the kingdom of God. He's always going to have that door there. For those of you who say, well, I don't know what God's called me to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. The Bible says, whatever your hands find to do, do that. And as you're serving, doing something, God will open the door for you to do what he really de uh, desires for you to do. And then the last thing is this, and that is God is always going to give us the door whereby we can do good for other people and for the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter six, verse 10, the text says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And so God is always gonna give us a door opportunity to do good. A door of salvation, he's always gonna give us. A door to be able to do good and a door to be able to serve his purposes and to serve the kingdom of God. Amen. God's going to do this. Now, I know this is a very simple teaching, but I think it's a very important teaching because I think that a lot of us are really looking for God to open some doors for us 
and to really uh, take us from one level of, of, of uh, our walk to another level of, of, of the journey. And God is saying, I will do this. I will open the door for you. But you really have to understand what doors really mean and how to treat the doors that come available to you as a believer. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you this evening for this opportunity to talk with your people, Father God, about open doors, about doors of opportunity. Father, I thank you that Jesus said he is the door and we know him to be the door to everything we need, Father God, from salvation to, to healing, to peace, to prosperity. Father, we know that Jesus Christ is the door. And Father, we know that we are to be able to discern and to walk through those doors when those doors are made available to us. So Father, we thank you tonight for giving us understanding about doors and the opportunity of being able to walk through doors or to walk around doors. Father, we thank you that uh, your word is true and that your word shed light on the areas of darkness that we may not necessarily have understanding of. So Father, we thank you tonight for this teaching. We thank you, Father, for the people of God. We thank you, Lord, for their, their hunger for righteousness and their pursuit of the truth. Father, we pray that you will continue to bless them, that you continue, Father God, to open those doors for them, Father God, as they seek your face and as they cry out to you, Father. And Father, we pray that you would give them the ability to discern and to understand the doors that are made available to them. And we thank you for this, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, are you ready to bless the Lord in your giving? I'm going to turn over to the book of Proverbs chapter 3 as we get ready to honor the Lord with our, with our giving. Giving is a part of the worship service. And so uh, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and get your, your tithes and your offerings prepared, if you would please, if you haven't already done so. And I'm going to read to you from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and verse 10, a very uh, familiar two verses that we've pretty much um, are familiar with. But the text says in verse 10, the text says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. Now, verse 9 says, We are to honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. In other words, Whatever God allows to come into our hands, we ought to honor him with a portion of that which he's blessed us with. Now watch this. When we do this, verse 10, it, it says there is a promise attached to that obedience of honoring God. He says in verse 10, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy precious should burst out with new wine. But the text is saying very simply, and we understand this, that when you and I honor God with that which he's blessed us with, give him a portion back. The text says God will see to it, and this is a promise, this is a covenant promise, he will see to it that we will have continued resources coming back to continue to give into his work, amen? So tonight, I want you to pray, ask the Lord what he would have you to do, and once you get your tithes and your offerings prepared, just kind of lift them towards the screen. I'm gonna uh, pray of them and, and bless them, and believe God to bring you a harvest, amen? Now, there's several ways that you can give that's mentioned on the screen and whatever way um, uh, um, you desire to give, that's, that's fine. Amen. Father, we just thank you for these tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you for the people of God. Father, we thank you for their generous spirits. We thank you, Father God, for their obedience to your voice. And Father, we pray in that, that you would bless and multiply in this season every seed that has been released into your work, Father, a hundredfold in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you that there is no lack in the household of the saints. And Father, we thank you that there's no lack in your house. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Well, God bless you this evening. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, come out and see us Sunday morning. We'll be here at 8.30. We'd love to have you. Just come out and fellowship with us, amen. God bless you. Have a blessed night.